Hello, hi. Um, uh, may I introduce myself? Uh, my name is uh, Antonis Russos. I'm the BI director for Munich Re Health Tech. Uh, and uh, I'm going to present you today uh, the low code, no code platform and how you can manage application using those, using those platforms. So first, let me uh, tell you a few words about our company. Uh, my, our company is called Munich Ray Health Tech. Um, it's, um, it's a division of Munich Ray, which is one of the biggest reinsurance company in the world based in Germany. Uh, it's a, a, a leading global specialist in digital solutions for health insurance industry. And um, we have clients in more than 19 countries and 24 organizations. Uh, we have a, a 25 year uh, years of expertise and we are specializing in health insurance. We offer uh, to, uh, to our clients market proven digital solutions and have strong partnerships with Oracle for more than 25 years. Um, we are experienced uh, in health insurance software application development and have a very big team of skilled professional, professionals bringing strong engineering mindset. We have been awarded, among others, by Celent, which is a leading consulting firm uh, for our excellent services and have been awarded or by, by uh, leading HR organizations uh, for the last four years. Like I said, we have a big presence in 19 countries and among many organizations, we have clients with big insurance interest in industries and um, uh, we have presence uh, with clients across four different continents, big clients, especially in the area of Middle East, in Europe, in Africa, Central America, and Asia. We collaborate with Munich Re uh, to uh, bring in more customers from insurance companies, and uh, we provide our solution, which are mainly policy administrating systems. Uh, to help uh, our clients modernize, uh, doing digital transformation of their businesses, automating their processes, and handling a, a big portfolios of millions. Our main products are here. We have three main products. The core one is Mednext 10, which is a health insurance management system handling uh, different aspects of uh, of the business like products and premiums sales commissions application and policies authorization and claims billing providers reinsurance but we also have two satellite products which are of no less importance uh, which is an analytic solutions that we have called smart and this is the department i'm working on it's actually the business intelligence department that has and owns this product. Uh, this is called SMART, and it's about claims reserving and portfolio and monitoring and pricing system. Actually, this system and this platform is built on um, a low-code platform, and this is the reason that I'm here to talk about and uh, demo you how this low-code platform has helped us provide and create a big solution like this, an enterprise level solution that handles uh, different analytics uh, uh, solution aspects uh, for our clients. And uh, we have a third product called Shield, 
which is for anti-fraud uh, and um, abuse detection system uh, so that our customers are sure that um, we can uh, help them detect those cases using advanced capabilities like rule-based um, detection and as well as AI um, machine learning rule uh, uh, detection uh, rules. The technology we use uh, are, uh, have a different spectrum ranging from soap technologies, cloud ready, REST APIs technologies, and um, our main partners, as we said, is Oracle. So let's get to today's topic. Um, everything starts from a problem and how these low code, no code platforms and development has have started. It started from a problem which got to do with usually the big corporations or even the small ones faces um, a problem that they need solutions here and now in many cases. And this is not always easy uh, to be provided with such kind of solutions very fast. So they rely on out of the box platforms or IT departments to solve their business needs. Sometimes this takes a lot of time. We're talking about projects that may span to several years, system, different systems built on different platforms, trying to be integrated together, et cetera, et cetera. But in everyday work, the problem with the users of such a corporation or even the customers is that they need the solution quick, a quick solution that helps them automate their processes and avoid this tedious everyday work as much as they can. And this is not easy to implement using a complicated technology with a full stack, with uh, people. Uh, from IT, being involved with different skill sets and form big teams and projects that span to several years or several months in best case scenario. So this is where low code comes into the picture, where you can easily, a, a, a person that is called, usually you, you must have heard that, it's like the name is citizen developer. Uh, these are persons that have high IT skills, but do not need to code on um, a high level language. Uh, uh, we don't need to have different people to build an application with different skill sets and all of this work together, but rather than have an easy tool usually having a graphical interface, a graphical tool that is highly configurable and we can easily and very fast creating code without actually running, without actually writing uh, several lines of code. Uh, we will see some different examples later on on how this can be done, how this can be achieved. Uh, I'll try to give you an analogy which is, for example, let's say uh, that we want to build a website. Uh, we have two options if we want to build a, a website. We, are, we either hire, let's say, developers, which are web backend developers knowing Python or PHP or whatever. And we also have and hire uh, developers that know the front end which is React or Angular or some other JavaScript network. And we also have the UI UX designers. So we need a big team that comes together to create sometimes even from scratch an application. The other option is to go quickly uh, using a tool like WordPress or Shopify if we're building an eShop, which is highly configurable we can easily, without even sometimes running, writing no code, create uh, a site 
and have it up and running very quickly. We can work on the features and we can focus on the features mainly rather than the underlying technology and writing code, but we mainly focus on the business aspect because we, we gain some time with, without writing all this code and without having all these people collaborating together. Some examples of, of low code application platforms are Microsoft Power Apps, Google Application Maker, RPA platforms. Um, RPAs are, stand for Robotics Platform Automation, robotic, Robotics Process Automation, sorry. Uh, meaning uh, that we have applications um, that can be highly configurable so that our processes can be easily um, automated. For example, uh, we, uh, we would like to create, we would like to retrieve information from a website, incorporate them uh, with, our, with our database, creating an Excel and sending out a mail to a customer. This can be easily done with, with the, the, the assistance of an RPA platform, which we can configure. There is an interface, uh, a graphical tool that we can drag and drop the different parts of information and how we want them to be retrieved, processed and presented, and even mailed to our customers. The same stands for, for chat box. Well, now we're talking about sophisticated chat box platforms that can be highly configurable. Um, this uh, this uh, right part of the screen, top, uh, you can see a um, page designer, we will see them later on the slides, uh, which is how someone would, uh, in, in a um, low-code application developer, would design a page uh, to be served on the customer like a form or a presentation. Um, while on the bottom part, we see uh, a visual uh, studio, uh, code development, um, where someone needs to be highly trained and we need to have highly people, uh, which also takes time for them to create all these things. So comparing this, it seems that it's quite more fast and easy to create the same thing without uh, dealing with all this coding. A big question that comes up is, can you build complex enterprise level applications with low code or it's only for small applications? Uh, in MRHT, we have built one of our core products, which is SMART, an analytics suite that serves a very highly, uh, let's say, skilled develop, um, uh, sorry, um, professionals like actuaries and um, underwriters to do the uh, everyday monitoring, automating the tasks, um, um, uh, let's say tracking the KPIs with all these nice things. Um, and we have developed this application purely on a low code platform uh, provided by uh, Oracle and named Apex. So we built that application which is highly scalable, meaning it can serve uh, hundreds of complicated queries concurrently at the same time, uh, serving users across the globe from different organizations, different regions, securely, uh, providing a role-based functionality and provides interactive dashboards, as we can see here. Interactive dashboard meaning that we have storytelling, we can click on every box, saying a different part of the story, different part of the parameter, and it can zoom in to show display dedicated, uh, let's say, data about a specific figure or a specific um, KPI. 
Uh, we have deployed this application also uh, as a source in, in the cloud, in Oracle Cloud uh, as, um, as a service. And um, like I said, uh, it's uh, been accessed uh, by clients in Asia, Europe, and Central America. So yes, the answer is that we really can provide uh, and uh, create enterprise level applications with low code uh, platforms. Um, another question is, does low, low code plat development give popularity adoption or is it something that we really shouldn't be bothering with? Uh, According to Gardner, the, the adaptability and the increase in low-code, no-code platforms uh, will reach 65% of application developments by 2024. And the annual growth rate, actually the growth rate every two years will be around 165%. Uh, so when business begin to use these low-code, no-code tools, uh, the number uh, of users, the citizen developers, as we say, will increase and more and more people within the organization will start dealing with and be engaged to really solve their needs and their problems or even customers' problems developing that, those kinds of applications. And there are reasons for doing this. It's not uh, that um, it, it came out of the blue. It, it's got to do with accelerating the digital innovation and transformation. Imagine that you work in agile groups with people, small teams, five or six person, uh, uh, cross-functional teams from different departments, uh, creating and building applications very quickly, test them, even do A-B testing, uh, pivoting, changing the features and functionality easily because the whole life cycle of adding new features, of, of creating new products is significantly less. And this helps in focusing more on the business side of a problem rather than on the technical uh, specification and implementation of it. Also, it reduces the, the IT backlog. So IT can handle, let's say, other applications that are harder to deal with low code and it requires a high level programming. Um, we also find a way that, uh, that uh, we don't deal with, with legacy applications. We can work on more modern applications and create more modern application just by integrating with legacy systems, retrieving mainly data from them and accessing the database. Um, also, we, we have less dependency on how to hire technical skills. And uh, we engage, like we said, people to become citizen developers rather than uh, just uh, highly skilled and very specialized programmers. Oh. And, uh, but uh, the question is, the local developer, what is the profile of a local developer? Um, there is a big difference between lo low code and no code. No code is more abstract, is more configurable. It doesn't necessarily need high technical skills. Low code need experienced IT professionals because they will have to deal with uh, real IT concepts like we see here, security, authentication, database retrieval and processing of data, session management, user interface design, application logic. They have to create reports and dashboards. They have to create REST APIs and prototypes. The difference between that, between these and the high level programming languages is that these are, 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 are more, let's say, configurable 
level rather than writing lines of code. So we define the user components, the user interface components. We will see then uh, some screenshots there how we do that uh, of an application that we want to build rather than writing code. And here we see a screenshot of the application builder and what are the main components that we can use. We'll see later on as well. This is the application architecture of Apex. This is the tool that we are using in MRHC. And um, here is uh, say the front user interface, actually the part that the user interacts with. It's usually a browser, either from a laptop or a desktop or from a mobile web-based application using the technology, the non-technology of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So it communicates with HTTPS via HTTPS with another layer provided by Oracle, which uh, has the name ORDS, and for Oracle REST Data Services, and this is the middle tier. Actually, here, the, uh, it receives the HTTP requests and um, transforms them to JDBC requests. So it opens the connectivity with the Oracle database. Here, the request comes in, in the Oracle layer, and um, uh, the real engine and the real runtime of this uh, let's say, layer runs here. It gets the request, um, accesses the application metadata. So everything here is configuration, is metadata. All the UI components, uh, let's say all the database, queries, everything is metadata. Metadata is data about data. So it's information on what the user wants to do based on the instruction given by the developer that developed this Apex application. And then there is being transformed and translated to Oracle, let's say, um, language. Um, the Apex runs the execution engine and uh, executes the business logic and the database connectivity with the actual database to get the data from. This can be local or remote databases, um, not only Oracle, but non-Oracle databases, seeking always uh, to get the data from. And then after the data has been retrieved, the business logic applies here based on the metadata and execution engine. The response is from back and given to the user. Another question, big question is, this low code development, does it support advanced SDLC capabilities? We have now, uh, we have lately seen that um, there is, uh, let's say, um, there is lately um, a, a big demand for automation of the whole life development, uh, the software development life cycle using techniques like uh, CI, CD, continuous integration, continuous development tools, DevOps, so that we can speed up the whole application project, uh, process, deliver uh, in sprints, uh, using agile scrum methodologies and all these things. These things need actual tools so that the whole um, cycle is accelerated, uh, we are pivoting, like we said before, we are testing, we are changing the functions and the, uh, the features of, of our products continuously. And this is done with a transparent and quick way. So those uh, tools are not only for small teams or for individual, but can also serve for big teams and can also um, be combined and uh, complemented with um, uh, automated tools. We will see here what are the tools that we can use. 
uh, first of all, we need to use um, to, and to follow a modular and um, mini application approach, meaning that we can build separate mini applications that communicate with, um, across them. They have authentication across them and they have um, separate schema objects to access the data. They can um, also use a common application library for reusability purposes. We can use separate environments like development, testing, UAT production. Uh, it can support teamwork environments and use of classic software configuration management tools like Git. It supports automated testing. It can automate the SQL, uh, let's say part uh, with PTP LSQL. It can uh, automate the testing of the user interface using Cypress or even Selenium. It can perform security and software quality audits with SonarCube and Apex Sex, Sec, meaning that all these things can be done um, using all those tools, uh, the, the software and the, the, that has been let's say created using this application in the background by the, by the tool, it is checked against uh, good quality, uh, is checked against uh, security, uh, it checks about um, uh, whether we have vulnerabilities like SQL injections problem or poor SQL patterns. Uh, so all these tools that we know that are around for and uh, be a, a complement of, of high level languages can also be used here. There is also an Apex advisor that run built in audits looking for different kinds of errors, security concerns, potential performance issues, violation of best practices in the area of usability, accessibility, and more. So, all these nice CI CD DevOps tools that used in other, let's say, known environments can also be used here to boost time to market of new features. Uh, critical things to drive success in uh, for, for no for low code uh, platforms in 2022 is that we address security because this is a main concern by following best practices like we do with all the high level languages, uh, we train experienced developers to follow the best security practices. We integrate audit security tools and execute periodic penetration tests. So this is as well addressed if we follow all the usual steps. Uh, we also need to hire and train and keep trained using reference materials and policies to our developers so that they are aligned with the other businesses and collaborate on the agile teams. Um, we also need to organize, uh, to, to align internally as an organization so that there is um, a, a good collaboration between the individual departments and you need to solve problems uh, together and uh, using an innovative uh, mindset so that we make sure that there are no silos, which is one of the biggest problems we faced in big corporations uh, between teams. This helped a lot, collaborative work, agile work, innova, innovation, etc. And of course, to, to, to embrace hyper automation. So let's get now to some, uh, uh, let's say, uh, to the platform itself, how others can help and has helped to build and what it looks like. After all, you are all developers or most of you, and you wanted to see how, how it works. So it's um, this is where you log in. Uh, there is a workspace that you are working on, either individually or with um, other team members on the same workspace. You can share workspaces with other team members, and you log in with your name, username and password. 
And then this is a classic, let's say, page designer, which looks like um, you have all the components that you need here to create your home page, uh, having the body, uh, having uh, different regions. You can assign regions. So within the same page, you have different regions. In one region, you might uh, display user information. On another region, you might display a chart or some other information about the invoices uh, that uh, or the bills of the specific user, et cetera, et cetera. So all these components come with ready templates. And for example, you can use a chart, since we're talking about an analytics application that we have developed, you can use a chart to to connect with your data. So what you do is on a region, you provide the chart, then you connect with the data, writing an SQL statement to bring in the data, or even you can go without it. You can just uh, say that this is uh, the, the database and it can create a fully automated XML schema behind, and you don't have to bother about how you write the SQL statement, but you rather drag and drop the, the um, uh, information pieces that you need, the fields, the tables, etc. cetera. Um, and you connect it to the chart, and then uh, voila, it comes up with uh, the, the chart of the data that you have connected to. So you don't need to write code, rather than use ready components here to display them on, on the region of the screen that you want to have it. Each component has its own, as you can see there, here, uh, the, the properties. Um, on another screen here, you can see what you can work with. So there are components that you can share among your application, among your screens, uh, your presentation layers, or your logic. Uh, they are shared components, and you can build them uh, components about application logic, navigation, lists, menus, uh, data sources, even um, REST data sources, and you can even define REST APIs, security components, how you do the authorization, how you do the session management, uh, how are you doing the um, web, uh, providing the web credential? Uh, you have user interface components that you can share, uh, themes, templates, etc. Reports, ready templates you can use to bring your data in and display them. And other components like list of values, plugins, etc. Email templates, even to send out an automated email. Uh, etc. Et so uh, you can also have uh, authentication schemes, and it can even integrate your application to be authenticated with the social media, any of the usual social media, or for example, with big providers like Azure Authentication. It can easily integrate with with all these uh, um, providers. And finally, it's a, a demo of, of something uh, you have built. For example, uh, you check through the logs of an application, and this is a demo application that checks through the Azure authorization uh, log uh, events from a user. Uh, and this is it comes with a tabular format. The, the developer creates and I use the template, an existing template to, to do that. Put it on that region of the form, and then use another region for some more details and another one for the graph. This can be easily done in minutes if you are experienced, if you have get used to, to, to using this tool. So these are this is the uh, presentation. If you want to go ahead with uh, some uh, questions.
So I see no Q&A. Uh, you are all, uh, uh, again, uh, welcome. I would like to thank you for joining this presentation. And um, um, it's, it's, it's nice to, to having this chance to present you for the, of, of all these uh, new developments that uh, uh, we have worked with uh, the last uh, few years and using this technology with very good results. Thank you again for joining. Uh, uh, have a nice evening to all of you. And thanks again. Bye.